So the Retro Battle Stations Reddit is having a fun contest to show off a cannonball game. And here's my version. This is written for a BC Basic Best Calculator Basic. And what I've got is a reimagining and a rewrite of the original code. I, I looked at the original code, of course it was provided, and then uh, because I like my own basic better and has a ton of features, I used it. Let's talk about what some of the features here are. Uh, first of all, this is for Retro Battle Stations. I'm RS Client up on Reddit, and it's for the Cannonball game. This over here is the little cannon. It actually consists of two pieces, a little round dot and a barrel, the, the breach in the barrel. You can move the cannon by going up and down with the slider. And the goal is to get and hit over in the water area. The little figure is actually a Unicode uh, figure, and technically speaking, it is a running person. And the running person is just being tumbled end over end over end, and that makes it look like a person being shot unwillingly out of a cannon. At this size, it's actually a very difficult game to win. I'm, I'm trying to set it up and it doesn't go very well. You'll also notice every time I fire the cannon, that I'm firing, by the way, with the space bar, so ready, space. There it goes. The cannon actually moves, because, you know, cannons do that. <clears throat> you also notice, and this is sort of the fun thing, uh, when you land, let's see if I can land a little closer, there it is, boom, right into the ground, it turns into a little coffin, which is plain old fun. Let me show you some of the code that I'm using here. And I'm going to start off by showing off the, the little bit of code that tries the cannon. And the actual cannon, like I said, is composed of two pieces. By the way, if, if you've been using uh, uh, BC Basic and you're looking at the, at the editor here and saying, hey, how come my editor doesn't look like that editor? I am actually redoing the editor and the compiler, and it's not been released yet, but it's a way faster editor and a way faster compiler, but there's still some glitches, which is why I haven't released it yet. So we make two different parts of the canon. The breach, this part here, which is the plain old circle. The language itself hasn't really changed for this version. There's a center X and a center Y, which is where the cannon will be done. And then a width over two, because it's the radius and width is like the width of the cannon barrel, which is based on the uh, length of the barrel, which is the CN value. I reused a bunch of the different variables from the original code. And then the barrel is this rectangle. Where do I want to draw it? Well, from the CX point and then the CY, and then there's some stuff about height and length, and then it, it goes on to the CN value. And then here's the cool thing. The cannon can be rotated. And so the way we rotate is by using this little rotate value, which is a get only property, and you give it an angle in uh, b -b 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 radians, and it will uh, display it, and then we'll rotate it. Now we'll rotate it around the center, which normally on a rectangle would be the center center, but you can set the CXD value. It's not documented because it's not fully done and baked yet, but you set this CXD, and that's where in the rectangle you want the center part for rotation to be, and I want it to be all the way at the left. What this means is if I rotate the sea breach and the sea barrel, it'll rotate the gun. Now, obviously, this is a uh, function here for the draw cannon. I need to have a global variable for the breach and a global variable for the barrel, and I need those because I need to just set them and then also use them later. And then I also have global variables for the angle, the size of the cannon, and the X and Y position of the cannon, and the cannon color, because obviously you, you want to be able to change the cannon. Let's take a look at what happens when I fire a cannonball. And obviously to fire a cannonball, we have, have an actual cannonball, and so we have a little text thing. And I set the size and I set the value to this little tumbling figure. And it has an X and Y position. And it starts off with an opacity here of zero because I don't want to see the figure until I actually fire it. And then the color is going to be the ball color and stroke. And that's because sometimes it's a figure and sometimes a ball. And I changed my mind as I, as I made the code, which is why there's a little remark statement here talking about making a little circle. Right. So when I fire the cannon, Firing the cannon is going to be this little find thing in the new editor, which is very handy. So fire cannonball. 
what does fire a cannonball actually do? And there we are firing the cannonball and fire cannonball. Here we are, fire, 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 cannonball, fire, cannonball, here we are. Uh, given the graphics area and then the speed and then there's a whole ton of global variables because firing the cannonball involves setting its opacity and then also its color in case we want to set the color. We set the text to these figures. There's a bunch of different things that I can set for the figure. So I had some penguins and a whale and a UFO and I, I like actually the running person the best. So I, you can't actually change the figure. In theory you could, but I don't. I don't. Um, there's also this result text and the result text says, hey, you want to get lost and you want to set the opacity to zero at some point because I don't want to actually see it. The last update time is critical here because every time I get a, a uh, interrupt, I'm going to recalculate the position of the cannonball. I need to know the last time I updated the cannonball, which is when I fired it originally, so that I handle the, the positions uh, correctly. So we set an X and Y position, which is the, where the cannon is. And oh, and hey, by the way, I'm going to actually position it at the mouth of the cannon. So it's CN, which is the length of the cannon times the cosine or sine of the cannon angle, which is in radians, of course. The velocity is based on the speed and the acceleration. There's no acceleration in the X direction. And the Y acceleration is, of course, 9.98 meters per second squared. And I include this gravity multiply because it makes it easier to fiddle and get the parameters all nice. I also set, when I fire a, a random value, which is the CX delta, that's where I'm going to move the cannon, uh, the amount by which I move the cannon, either forward or backward, every time it fires. Draw the ground, draw the ground at the start, ground. So let's take a look at uh, update, uh, update uh, cannon ball. And I can't find anything because it's a little further back. Well, update. Oh, because it's update ball, not update cannonball. So here's update ball, which is the update cannonball routine. There's a whole ton of variables, the X and Y for position, velocity, and acceleration. The last update time, the speed up time, because we can make it go faster or slower. We get a delta here, which tells us the delta time since the last time we updated. So our new X position is the velocity times the delta. The new velocity is the old velocity with the acceleration. I then update the ball CX and CY value. This actually makes it go somewhere. There's this point value. So I got a cannonball, but I also have this like shadow value called point, which is in the exact same place as the cannonball. And I use that to do intersect tests. I also say, hey, by the way, if the ball is actually accelerating in the y direction, that it's not stopped, then uh, rotate it. It's by some random amount. And if the ball is gone into the ground, then just stop it. It's dead. We're, we're, we're finished. So when you hit a space bar, I detect that. And then I call this fire. And that sets up the variables. And then every time there's a frame, it calls the update and Shazam. And so here is, for example, my per frame call. You might wonder, how the heck do you get the per frame call to be called periodically? And the answer is system.setInterval, which looks a lot like JavaScript, doesn't it? SetInterval, it even has the same parameters. The name of a function to call, which is frame, how often to call it in milliseconds, and then an arbitrary parameter, which you can take a look at later. So if the state is, oh, and I always love to have state variables. If the state is W, which is waiting to fire, uh, the other states are R for running and E for end. If the state is waiting to fire and you hit a space bar, then fire the cannonball. If the state is E at the end and I'm showing a score, then and I hit space and actually start playing. Up and down is for the arrow keys and then I move the cannon angle. If the state is R, which is running, then update the ball. Uh, move the cannon a little bit. This, by the way, is kind of cool. What I do is I look at the overall delta that I want to move it by. And every frame, I move it by 10% of the overall delta and then I change the delta to subtract off the 0.1 value, which I actually do by multiplying by 0.9 because that's the exact same thing. This gives a weird, like exponentially weighted uh, change. I've got this if math.abs is greater than one. I actually realized later on I didn't actually need that because eventually CX delta will become so small to be trivial and then there's no point in changing things. Uh, some people might say, but it's important not to move the cannon if there's no value in moving the cannon. However, I believe that is a false or an incomplete analysis. A better analysis is 
In all cases, the game must work smoothly when the cannon is moving, and therefore it cannot hurt to move the cannon extra. The calculate result here determines whether we are going to collide with anything. That's actually calculate result. Let's take a look for that. Calculate result. It's got to be here somewhere. Calculate result. Calculate result. Calculate result. Result. Got to be here. So here we go. Calculate result. So it's just a surprisingly small thing, right? There's the point, which is the thing that matches the cannonball. We got three things you can collide with because I do the ground collision later on. You can collide with the basin, which is the water where you, and you can collide with the tower. You can collide with water. I actually, it says basin, but I actually don't care about the basin. I actually care about the water and the tower. If I collide with the water, then I then they return an S. S in this case means succeeded. F means failed. If I collide with the water, I succeed. If I hit the tower, I failed. And if the ball is no longer moving, then that's also a failure because I hit, must have hit the ground. All right, let's take a look at the game one more time. Cannonballs, it's got a display. I fire it. On failure, I convert the person into a little coffin. Let's fire again. This, that's not gonna, That's going to shoot way under. Whee! Ah, bam! Dead. All right, let's see if we can make it go a little bit further by going there. It's uh, at this size. This is actually uh, this is just barely playable because you only just barely get far enough. And now the cannon's even like slowly moving off the side of the screen. That's 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 not going to be good. Bam! All right, zero out of five attempts. Try aiming for the water. Well, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this little bit of code and take a look at Retro Battle Stations. It is a very fun Reddit that talks about all kinds of old fashioned computers and occasionally has little things for basic. Thank you.